uh, wait, no, first we open the meeting up. Okay, meeting's open. Um, we have any public comment? I don't think we do have any, any, any members of the public on, on the call, do we? No members of public. Okay, all right. Um, next order of business is to approve the minutes. Thank you, Perry, for sending those out earlier, um, earlier today. Um, I'm not sure if I have a chance to, to look at those or not. Um, I'm going to bring them up right now. You have them available? So, yeah, so ours. I do, yep. Yeah. Um, can you put them on the, can you share them real quick? I believe I have the share setting open. Okay. That's, that's not it. How about I just do it from my screen? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. <laughs> that works for me. I'm actually right. looking at them. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Um, so, um, I, I can I can I chair and make a motion to approve. So moved. Any seconds? Second. Okay. So moved. Motion, motion accepted. <laughs> um, excellent. So, um, so yeah, let's move into the um, into today's meeting. Um, I, I don't know if there's a full, actual a full. There's a, a formal agenda. Um, I think what I wanted to. Yeah. What, what Brian? I don't really have a formal agenda for this one. It was more of just going back to where we left off. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So um, I know we wanted to, to discuss next steps on solar, and um, I know Sam's got some ideas on that. He's not with us yet, I don't believe. Um, but um, I can I can tell you at least what I, what I know, and maybe, maybe Perry, you have some some light you can shed on this. But um, and I sent an email around yesterday uh, or two actually, I think, just kind of updating folks um, on where the town is. Um, so yeah, so I guess Matt has been um back and forth a few times with um with encore and i haven't seen a contract yet we, we you know uh, a few of us weighed in on the draft and um and just kind of shared our, our feedback and i haven't seen anything back from matt you know over the course of this back and forth um but they're getting close i think he had to table a motion at the town council meeting yesterday to uh to vote on it because it's not quite there so we said that um, uh, hopefully in the next next couple of weeks, or maybe you know, worst case, at the next town council meeting, they'll be able to vote. Um, Perry, do you have any any more kind of inside baseball on that? I have nothing. I have not talked to the town manager in probably at least two weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so there so there we there we have that. Um, so I've been I've been I've been kind of you know been bugging um, Matt for um, this opportunity for us to kind of, you know, get, get involved at, at this point um, where he, it's been for the, you know, for the past few weeks. Um, and he's always been, he's always politely declined our interventions <laughs> to keep it moving. So um, uh, based, anyway, so, yeah. Based on the information that you've sent, are the people that are more knowledgeable on, on than I see any red flags? Um, Gary? Oh, Tom, you're muted. I can see you trying to talk. Um, we, you know, we made a bunch of comments. I think, you know, I have, we haven't seen any more recent drafts. So there are no, there are a lot of things missing, but no red flags. So it was just making sure you get all the information got in. Sam went through it in detail as well. So we just need to see the next draft if the town wants us to. Yeah, they want us to. <laughs> is that Lippman? Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's right here. He's right here. <laughs> I like your, I like your, um, the ceiling of your car. Um, but the, yeah, I we trying to get home and. Uh, I, I I really feel like they want to, they should push to an agreement pronto because we got like one one or two town council meetings and it's going to be a new town council. You're going to have to bring people up to speed and there's a yeah. bunch of other stuff happening so. The, the, yeah. the, the agendas are relatively light. Um, 
the disagreements are not far. I think we need to light a fire ever and ever under everybody and just say, let's get it to where we can put a signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what the issues are. I think, you know, my, and, uh, if I remember I'm looking at the email from Matt, um, but he said there was some, some sort of uh, maybe hang up, but on like the land lease part of it. Um, I'm not, I'm not privy to what exactly the, the issue was, but um, I, I, I did encourage him strongly after our last meeting um, that time is of the essence and to be aware of that. So, you know, well, I'm not sure what the thing is. And that's the, that's the point, Sam, isn't it? We won't know. We don't know what the problem is and we can't help anybody until, you know, and when that, you know, so. The, who knows? The, the only other question, is it happening lawyer to lawyer right now or the principals have a, have a stake in the game? Cause they're the ones who are going to say, look, cut bait and let's get it signed. The, mm -hmm. If it's, if it's with Encore's attorney, they'll shave that pencil all day long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Except they're under, you know, John, I agree with you. It, it, it depends upon how it, an attorney looks at his company and how he has to be a hero. Also, the other thing is they, they are under the gun, too, to get this stuff done, right? I mean, there's there's a time limit here where they know that the, the project is going to be valuable or not to them. So... You know, again, without having anything to look at, we we can only guess what the problem might be. You know, it's, you know if there is one. Well, I think if we just go back and make one more offer, if there's anything they want us to look at, we're here. We can turn it around quickly. Yep. Yep. I'll make that offer again. Um, so that's that's where I on the on the PPA contract. I don't I don't have any reason to think that it's. I think it's probably just, yeah. it's just, yeah. just government bureaucracy <laughs> you're grinding through. Um, no offense to anybody who's involved in, in town government um, uh. <laughs> and lawyers, government, government, government and lawyers. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get there. And um, so, yeah. And then one thing I've been really interested in, I think folks are also um, is uh, if Sam, if you had any progress, uh, if we're ready to move on to the, the next phase of the solar, um, which is kind of this intermediary, uh, you know, solar PPA uh, that we may be able to um, to tap into from from, from uh, uh, some of the, the, the solar farms that are in development. Um, Sam, any any kind of news there that's worth reporting on? Well, it, we we had an offer, but but I think we have to look at how, how we're going to do this because yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think you mentioned last time. You're talking about a us being a subscriber at this point, uh -huh. and and so we had the we had uh, Charlie there, um, Agnew, mm -hmm. offer this incredible deal. But I, I as I, I relate what I as I share with you, Sam, I also want to see personally um, this process at least go to the other um, bidders. Not, not that we have to make this thing into an elaborate RFP, but it could be an addendum or, or an addition to what we've got so far to the people who have already bidded because they, you know, we, we have to consider um, the, 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 not only the price, but when these projects get built, because this didn't sound like a solar, pro, a, a solar developer who was being, who was going to get built all that soon. So I think mm -hmm. basically we need to, we need to incorporate my opinion we incorporate what Charlie is doing with our process where they would become one of the offerees, so to speak. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah, that, that works for me. And I know that, um, uh, and you, you know, sh shared some, you know, some language um, with me about, you know, uh, just, Something we could you know put out there to, you know, to to cultivate you know some some offers. Um, I I have no problem. I mean we should, maybe it's, it's, we should put it to a vote. Of course we should. Um, but kind of reaching out to those the the respondents to our RFP, um, asking them if they have any 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 solar they want to you know to to sell us over the next few months, um, to a year, um, or beyond, um, and also putting out to to, to Charlie. Okay, um, so we have two we have two sections, right? We have the supplemental which is 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 as an addition to ours over 20 years as well as the um full um 
usage until our project gets built, right? So it's kind of a two-part situation that can be chopped up into two separate parts or together. As the, and, and as I envision, the strongest bidder or uh, the most consideration will be a person who can will be willing to um, to uh, supply us with um, an R, uh, a, a PPA uh, for all of our power until our, our project gets built and then back off and, and for the supplemental part as well. That's mm -hmm. just how I, I look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can we can ask we can ask um, for both of those. I guess are two they would be two distinct contracts almost. But we can maybe we could ask for someone to bid to offer uh, one of those or both of those. Uh, ideally, maybe both would be easier. But um, anyway, yeah, I well, think you, yeah, you want both. But say, so if you want to put something to a vote or have people at least discuss, we number one is do we want to do another RFP with more than the people that we're dealing with now? Uh, do we want to do it just the people we're dealing with now so we don't have to put out all the documents because basically we've got a lot of the experience and everything else from these people and their, and their, uh, and their, 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 uh, basically their credibility. Uh, that's, that's one, that's one, you know, one of two issues, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to look at that in terms of what we want to do there. And then, of course, this two-part situation, which is going to only benefit us. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, I would make this fairly short and sweet. I, I wouldn't go out to a big list of new people. We already know from the people that bid before who had other projects that might want to consider stuff. Some people did, some people didn't. I know, I know that Amoresco had other ones, a couple other ones. So I would go back to the guy that's been in contact with Sam and I would go back to anyone that was on our list who said, you know, we've got another project off site that you could buy from. And I would just leave it at that and say, that's probably yeah. enough work. And I'd make it real, I'd make it real simple. It's, you know, it's all of our need until uh, you, you can bid two things, all of our need until we get ours up and running and then whatever additional need we have or just the additional need. Cause I think the short term may not be of that much interest to some people. I would also tend to think that, so we don't get people kind of confused too much. I wouldn't, and I think this kind of offer is going to be around for a while as people scramble. I mean, I don't think we need to do this immediately, but I would wait until we get signed up um, with Encore mm -hmm. and through it. So something something doesn't derail that process Someone goes back what are you doing with another RFP? right 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 so right that's fine and and then i just do it and i keep it fairly short mm -hmm. also um I, I don't know if anybody's aware of this thing I, and, and i totally agree with tom <laughs> simple simple stupid and, and make money for the town um the other thing is you may even have that automatic to a point so uh, because a lot of these agreements even though they're 20 agreements have a, have a termination clause. So uh, uh, the, an out clause. So you could even, if that's, an, if for instance, um, uh, it, I can tell you the, the people I work with have a year notice and other people have six months notice. Well, in that case, you really have what you need for ingredients in terms of, of being able to supply all and then some, you know, even within their own, within their own contracts. Do we have to go to the town council to get it, do another RFP for this? So I, I think the sequencing is right. What Tom suggested, though, is basically get the Encore deal signed. I think that gives everybody credibility. In the meantime, you, we can start drafting up what we think the next one ought to look like, just, a, you know, a bullet point version. And if we need to get a specific approval, then we've got the materials to do it. Um, I, I, I would say... The cancellation piece becomes more important as more and more I look at the landscape. I think it's very possible we're going to be building new schools and that may change the electric profile substantially unless we're going to do a lot of uh, fleet electrification, um, the demand may go down. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the, you know, if you've got a year cancellation or, some, or even two year, you, you've got visibility on how to handle that without a problem. And in fact, it might go up in the, in the near term because of the uh, additional um, construction demand from portables and things. So, right. 
just to come back to touch base on that. So, jo John, is new schools, so really? I'm sorry, what? New schools. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, what I'm, because I'm just part, I'm thinking of it just from the energy committee standpoint, you know, that's yeah. the biggest single user. And yeah. how do we be, if that is that, if that's likely to happen, we should be talking about how we position ourselves in that discussion. Well, uh, the discussions are, are on the building side are happening, you know, are underway. And then you're looking at the, the top line, just from what I was looking recently, you know, useful life left in the high school is about 10 years or, or so, or um, Pine Cove and, and middle school are probably less than that. It's probably 23 million total to bring both of those to fix what we know about right now. Um, building a, a new school is roughly 40 million bucks. If you build two new schools, which you kind of need with Pine Cove and middle school, you might save some. So you're looking at maybe 70, 75 million ballpark. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what's in front of, front of the town. It, you're gonna, it, it, it's, you know, 20 million roughly to, to, to invest into your you know, asset that's um, at the end of its life or build new. Um, yeah. So, and, and again, I don't know what the actual energy footprint yeah. is. That those, they actually may still can use a fair amount of electricity versus other forms of energy. Because um, I think it's very highly likely they'll be, they'll be likely heat pump and other kinds of. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. They, yeah. so, so, we're not talking about, we're not talking about integrated solar integrated no. storage if we're not talking about that integrated storage rooftop heat pumps you know it, it's just crazy we that that should be part of that agenda absolutely yep. yeah we, i thought we had a plan to get involved in that discussion um you know but it sort of got derailed by by covid but perry you had told us you were going to get us involved with the discussion on the schools when we got to the right point and is now the right point? It's not, not yet. We're getting ready to start our talks again because our, our meetings got derailed as well. And and the subjects went just kind of went dead during the whole COVID outbreak. Um, it, it, we're, get, we're getting ready to start that next week, I believe it is. And it, um, but I, I they, they want to move it along pretty quick. It's, so, it's on everyone's mind, partly because of the election and the school board and town council and everyone's talking about it and finally like looking at the materials. And so people are speaking to it. And so you're starting to get a sense of where people are coming out based on finally reading information that's been around for several months. So that's why it's sort of to the forefront a little bit now uh, in terms of the actual process of designing, building, all that. I don't think that's actually moved along, but it's really raised in the community's consciousness in the last three or four weeks. Well, certainly if, if, they, if there's a process in place and we should be, we should be in it. So, um, yeah, yeah thank, thanks Perry for keeping us, keeping us plugged in whenever, whenever the moment. Yeah, you know, and John, do ready. you know where we could find those materials? Like, are those materials that we can look at? Building materials, a building committee is meeting on the 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, a question for you, Perry. Yeah. Um, what do you think the reduction will be in our energy costs based on the LED uh, lights we're putting in in the high school. Is there any, any handle on that at all? Uh, there is a handle on it. I actually have that document sitting on my desk and I can't tell you off the top of my head right now, but I can certainly send it out when I get back to work tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I'm just curious because I'm not sure because we get a lot of uncertainties going on here right now, but that's one certainty that if you would just take that that piece it, it should you know is it, it's just a matter of subtraction from there right i i can tell you you know based on what we're talking with the engineers and architects i mean even it, even if we decided to do a new building today uh, you're looking at maybe five years out until the shovel actually hits the ground mm -hmm. and and the, the high wow. school the high school could be you know like john said another 10 12 years you know, it, it all depends on what the town can actually afford, and whether even it gets approved by the town. So, <laughs> you know, I can go for vote a couple times before it actually get approved. Yeah. Hey, well, anyway, John was correct, and all the things that are being said here, John, John's right. We need to have some flexibility with the determination side, and I think everybody offers it. I forgot what Encore is in in their contract, but anyway. 
the, and, and I'm assuming at this point, which is a lousy assumption, that even if you build a new building, uh, you still got the same number of people consuming energy, and, yep. Yep. and although there's some more efficiencies there that go with it. Yeah. So some recent numbers I've, I've seen on operations and maintenance. I don't know what the uh, energy component of this is. This has to do with all the operations and maintenance. Currently, we're like the uh, current schools are like at a dollar eighty or two bucks a square foot. Um, other folks are like at a dollar to sixty cents a square foot for efficient buildings. I'm curious about on the schools part. Even we're kind of skipping around a little bit, but in the in the, in the, uh, the energy source of the you know uh, the, for the schools for heating and cooling, isn't it all electric at this point anyway? Because there's no gas line to the schools, is there? And certainly no. I mean, we don't burn oil or coal for heat. We, uh, um, we we use propane for some things, and the buildings are heated with oil. Oh, they are. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Got it. Yeah. yeah. So let's, uh, I, would, I would love to get some more electricity in there. You know, have mm -hmm. it offset by all the solar, get rid of the oil. Um, I, would, I would too. I'd buy about 120,000 gallons of it for the town each year. <laughs> yeah. <Let's see. laughs> My hunch is the new buildings will be oh heat pump oriented. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, we got we got plenty of room for improvement in all our buildings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can kind of. I guess we're at that stage right now. So, um, what's next? <laughs> I. I It'd be worth just have uh, Sam or uh, mention, mentioning the discussion that uh, the um, the climate action group plan sort of discussion. Uh, so there's a group of Cape folks that came together to talk about South Portland and Portland's um, climate action plan. Yeah, who did that? Is that Barbara? What? I think Barbara. Was yeah, I was on it. Sam was on it. John was, I was there. On it, yeah. So I dropped yeah. off. Yeah, and uh, Barbara, did you make, I mean, um, Carrie, did, Carrie, did I see your name on there? Or maybe? I, I was not able to make that meeting, but I'm very Neither was I. Yeah. yeah. You signed up, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, we can do a report out there when the time comes. But it was a good meeting. It was, it was a couple hours. And yeah, um, Barbara's husband was very good as a co-facilitator co with me. And we had about a dozen people. Um, and uh, Carney was there. Um, and uh, two of the counselors, uh, Jamie and um, Gabe. Um, Jeremy Gabriel. Yeah. yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're there. So we had a good, it's a good, good discussion. So we're gonna try to do it we, uh, monthly. Um, so, so stay tuned. And certainly in the meantime, the uh, GP Cog folks are gonna use Cape as sort of like a, uh, you know, a test. What do you want? You know, um, for this. Um, they want to kind of see if they can roll out kind of a downscaled version of the, the, the Portland, you know, um, model. And um, in the meantime, um, in the town side, they're going to kind of, you know, begin to collect at least examples of what the town's been doing that's been informed by some sort of, you know, climate motivation. Um, yeah. speaking, speaking for myself as an observer, I would just let the energy committee know, I thought the attendants were... Um, really relatively high power and very capable, very deep, um, and really interested in doing something substantive. So I was actually really encouraged. Um, but, you know, I've been to all kinds of different green meetings and climate action meetings. And this was a, this was a solid group that had it, had it together and was very realistic about what you could do as well as um, the, the breadth of what you could do. So I was, I was very encouraged. Yeah, and the, um, uh, you know, a, a senior person at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute was also there, a Cape resident, um, who will be very helpful in terms of informing the process, informing at least the, the populace about actual climate impacts. Who was um, uh, there from Gulf of Maine? Oh, do you remember Barbara? A woman? Uh, no, I can't remember. I think she does community education. Yeah, she's, she's my neighbor, I think. She was the community outreach person, yeah, I thought. Outreach. Yeah, so it wasn't Don Parkinson. Okay. No, 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 not that high <laughs> tone. <laughs> he was also a neighbor, too, right? right he's, he's around the corner from both of us, Tom. Um, yeah. So we'll get him involved. Um, but anyway, yeah, on the solar, I think we should just probably, um, yeah, after the Encore PPA, is, is the ink is dry on that. 
we can kind of go back to the other bidders and also to, um, uh, you know, our folks at competitive and say, hey, we want some more solar. You know, what do you got? Um, we can put it in legal terms. Um, but I think I think that's probably what we should we should be do doing. Um, in my opinion, I think that's that, that echoes what Tom had said earlier and what other folks have, you know, think is think will work. Um, does that does that sound reasonable? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, perfect. Um, I guess we don't need to vote on that, but we'll just do that. Um, and yeah, and I mean, it's on also on this on the solar front. Um, yeah, I'll I'll keep bugging Matt, you know, and see if there's any if it'll be helpful at all for us to review it. We can weigh in. Certainly, you know, we endeavor to get this thing done as quickly as possible. Um, and I think he shares our our sense of urgency around that. Um, but we'll make we'll make that I'll make that crystal clear um, when I speak to him tomorrow. Um, any other thoughts on the solar piece? I'm good for now. Oh, well, the only thing is, um, before we send us, like, when we get to the step of, of reaching out for other, um, to, to companies to, to fill the gap, we just, we probably want to check and make sure that the town doesn't have some rule that we need to make all solicitations public. Yeah, and I think Perry mentioned that he re re, um, spoke to that last last week, and just that I think I think we have or he has the power to go out and you know do these procurements um, without getting a going through a formal RFP or bidders process. Um, is that still your impression, Perry? Did, am I understanding that correctly? Uh, this is a little different than what I'm what I typically do, which is bidding out a little bit of a construction project. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll have to I'll have to check with Matt on this one as well okay we, we may have to make it public but mm -hmm. how that gets done it may just end up just going on a website you know it's i i gotta find out more on that okay great yeah if you can it, you know it, it might be a process where we're required to publish it on a website but then you can essentially point to people that you're already working with and talking to to say hey yeah. did you see this we just published on our website yeah, no, that, that yeah, seems fine but most municipalities i've come in encounters with yeah, you're you're, you be you're still allowed to public invite yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, no, that seems fine. Um, just don't want to exclude anyone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we don't we don't want to get in trouble. You know, because the process is the one thing we have, we probably have the most control over. Um, and to screw something up because we didn't check the right box would be silly. Um, and. Uh, Anyway, and that would probably be my responsibility <laughs> uh, as, as, the, as the chair of this powerful committee um, to not ensure that. So yeah, let's see, Perry, you can definitely check with, with Matt and make sure that we understand what the, the protocol is, you know, moving forward for that. Okay. That'd be great. Um, I am Ooh. super curious to hear if, if we can move on from Richard about the um, electric vehicle um, R, RFP. If the time is right, if people are ready to shift gears. Okay. Richard, um, yeah. The um, uh, been through the RFP and there was a bidders potential bidders conference um, uh, earlier this <clears throat> this month that I that I attended, and then I've uh, went ahead and contacted some some suppliers just to get some preliminary information on costs. Uh, let me. Can I share a screen here? Okay, now I need to share my second screen. How do I do that? <laughs> if you go to share, it should come up showing two screens. Which one you want to share? Yeah, or you can share from an application too if you need to. Uh, so where is that? If you go to share screen, yeah, then uh, it sh it'll show you like on mine. It sh it gives me an option of screen one or screen two, and then it gives yep. me all the. All right. uh, the first thing I, I think that um, uh, we need to understand is that the, the RFP requires a minimum of uh, four plugs per site. So um, um, 
regardless of where I put these things, they've got to be, we've got to have at least, at least four plugs. And um, the, in looking at the criteria, they're going to weigh heavily on use, likely usage. In the past, we talked about putting something at Fort Williams and something at the town. Um, and the, the problem that we're going to have with the town, I think, is usage. We don't have any, the town doesn't have any vehicles, any EV vehicles, so we'd have to put it up as a, as a public site and then I think you have to be considered about, you know, what kind of usage could we anticipate if we put something at the town hall. So um, the other side we were talking about was Fort Williams and that probably is not, that probably is very attractive from a usage standpoint. And I had Perry uh, let me know where the, um, where the plug-in sites, where the potential sites are at Fort Williams because a lot of the costs are gonna be associated with, uh, with getting electricity to the site. Wouldn't the place to put it be the Inn by the Sea? Well, there's already two sites. There's, the Inn by the Sea already has two sites, two plugs. They've got a Tesla plug and they've also got a general plug. Um, so we could go there. What it's about the true. library? Um, it's possible. But just, you know, just remember that they're, they're going to, it's likelihood of usage, and uh, it's also cost comes into the fact factor as well. And I'll get to that in just a minute. That's, I think that's the thing about the usage is that many people, you know, everyone in town who's got an electric car has probably got a charger at home. Yeah, I think I think Fort Williams would would be a huge. I agree, highly likely to be used because there's all these people driven from far away who go there. Fort Williams or Crescent Beach. I don't think we have jurisdiction over the parking at Crescent Beach because it's oh, state, state, state park property. I think. Um, yeah, but it's leased. It's leased from the Sprague family, so it's a little. Yeah. I just, I mean, to me, like Fort Williams is so far the front runner. Um, just there's just so many people who come there from far away. I was there today, and it was you know the parking lot was still packed. You know, so. Yeah. Amazing. Anyways, I had Perry. Give me the uh, where the where they're actually located, and then give you an orientation. Here's the lighthouse. Here's the circular around the lighthouse, and so this is the where the main parking lots near the battery. I can't remember what name that is. And if you look at that, probably is the best location from the standpoint of minimal uh, electrical cost for you know generating and trying to get electricity because there's a box right. We there. also need the internet. Isn't that a part of it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the, the current parking meters that are at the site, do they use, they must use the internet, right? I'm not sure. sure. They do. I think they do. Anyways, so I think you know, we, we talked about the, 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 I think there's a, if we settle on Fort Williams, I think there's a good uh, good location, probably minimum cost, and probably high traffic area. So that one probably has, in, in talking with the energy efficiency main, um, that's that's probably something that they would um, uh, like. Um, if we look at um, if we look at cost, <clears throat> um, I wanted to get something to to give to the town to see if they see what they're going to have to do. And if you look at what the, the, the um, costs are, let me look at this here. Um, I've got pricing information from two, two companies for the equipment. And um, they're both running about the same. This is a, and I got, uh, I got some prices from Juice Bar, which is out of North, uh, Norwalk, Connecticut. I've got another company. Uh, but basically, they use Gray Bar uh, as a vendor to in, to do the installation, and um, the um, if I just if I just run through this number, it looks like it's going to be for a for a network system. It's running about eleven thousand, twelve thousand dollars for the equipment, and then this and then there's also a software charge. These guys are charging thirty two bucks a month for software. Um, and the non-network non for these guys is not much less. The other companies, the network charge is a lot smaller. So probably, you know, 
$2,000. So if I, if I went, go through the numbers, um, if you remember what the allowances are for, um, uh, from uh, Efficiency Maine for the award, it's uh, $4,000 uh, for a net per plug for a network, $2,000 for a non-network. If I look all those, if I look, based on the price I've got today, probably if you, those are pretty good from the standpoint of what the maximum costs are going to be, the current, current estimates. So if we estimate that the, the cost for a four plug unit is going to be about the maximum that um, $16,000, which, which is the amount that the efficiency mean would allow. So based on those numbers, let's say the cost comes in at $16,000 for for a network four plug unit. Um, got the equipment, we've got the installation, the signage, the ballard, and so all this cost probably comes to something less than $16,000. And the award is 80% of the maximum cost or $4,000, whichever is less. So based on the cost information I've got right now, it looks like $16,000 is probably a good maximum estimate. Richard, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused. If you scroll up where you were before, right there, it says $5,000 unit, $11,400 for four plugs. Right. Uh, the $5,700 is a two plug unit. All right. They only this company only sells two plug units, so it takes two of those to get four plugs. So it's eleven four. Okay, so I can put how, do, how does that then go up to sixteen thousand? Sixteen thousand is is that the total allowable rebate? Sixteen thousand is a total allowable rebate for a four plug unit, and so you've got the cost. 11.4 plus you've got um, the uh, um, electrical connection charge, the uh, installation. Um, basically, go back to the <coughs> eligible costs. Um, the eligible costs are. Charger, the mounting hardware, the materials to connect, the software, the labor costs for installation the hardware, construction costs, excavation, paving, signage, all those things are, are things that come into the, to the price. But that's um, why I took the 11.4 and said a maximum would be 16 when you include all these things. Okay, so that's, and that's the maximum that Efficiency Maine will rebate is 80% of 16,000. Well, they would rebate. They would rebate sixteen thousand. So based on the current, but based on the current information I have from two vendors, I think we'd be hard pressed to get to sixteen thousand. Maybe we will, but I just assume the maximum would be sixteen thousand. Our cost would be. And, so they how, would, and how much can we get from efficiency? I mean, how many is are they limited to four chargers? Because I would think in a place like. Um, at Fort Williams, you'd be doing, you'd want to do like eight or 12, maybe. All right, then we could do, four. and just just multiply these, the, the equipment costs. The, the two vendors, the three vendors that I've talked to so far just do two plug, four plug, two plug units. So you okay. have to buy two of those to get to the four plugs. All I'm saying is that if, if we can get 16,000 for a four plug unit from the state, and we could do a four plug unit from the state, you know, it's no cost to the town, how many four plug units could we do? You know, could we get them in, in, you know, in Crest Beach, instead of doing four plugs in Fort Williams, do eight plugs. Could you stick, you know, those are both gonna be usage areas. And then, you know, the other usage area could even be if there's, a, if there's electricity nearby, like Robinson Woods on Shore Road, which gets used heavily where people park. You put a couple of plugs there. I, I'm just trying to think if it's, how much could we get from Efficiency Main out of this? And why should we think about one location? Uh, if, we, if we do, 
um, you have to do a minimum of four plugs at each location. So we can do four plugs, six plugs, or eight plugs at Fort Williams or any site. But if we go to another site, we have to do at least four plugs. So how do we talk about Crescent Beach then? Or, oh. Kettle, or Kettle Cove? I think we can do Crescent Beach because it's not town property. Plus, how is Crescent Beach used, year, used by that many people year round? It's, I thought it was more of a summer thing where you would have a lot of people parking there, not year round. Kettle, Kettle Cove might, it's more probably used year round, but um, I think that's a state park too. That's a state um, park as well. Yeah. It seems like um, we want to do, I think Fort Williams is a good idea and you could do more plugs at Fort Williams because your construction costs would be less for more plugs because you wouldn't have, you know, if you did another site, you'd have to have all those same construction costs and installation costs and that would be double those costs. But I think we should also think about t somewhere around the town center where people are shopping, going to the library, maybe oh, and oh, then town, cool. town vehicles. Wait, wait. Eventually. Would there, be, would there be teachers who'd be driving to school who would use? Yeah, I could see the school parking lot, but the thing, you know, think about how long you spend at the IGA. You're really going to get out plugging your car for the 12 minutes you're there on average. Yeah, I don't think the, the store is necessarily the best spot. Maybe the library or the schools or the um, rec center. <laughs> yeah. The schools, you'd be, doing it for, you'd be doing it for the faculty and people who are commuting in. And that makes sense. Yep. How long to charge on average? Yeah, if it's a Tesla fast charger, you're going to get 40 minutes to 80% charge. But, but that's not what these are, right? These are level two chargers. Yeah. Right. So I think they take, I think they, they take quite a while, but I, I don't know. It's, like 20, it's 25 minutes per, per hour. I'm sorry, 25 miles per hour of charge. So yeah, you're not going to juice up your car by being going, why are you going grocery shopping? But you can, you know, it'll help you. You can get home, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, think, I think this, you know, there are multiple rounds of this too. So we could do for Fort Williams, you know, this round. We could do four um, at the maintenance shed where, you know, where the, you know, the town vehicles maybe will be parked. Um, which I think is be a really compelling um, for the think, town to do, especially if there's and there's some cost involved, um, and the town can actually charge up and save save fuel costs using it. Yeah. that could be really I good. Would think, I would think you would also do this, you know, if you could, you know, it, it, why wouldn't you increase it in by the sea? People come. It's our, you know, frankly, it's our largest taxpayer in the entire town. And if we can get them more charging for their visitors, help them attract more customers, why wouldn't we be looking at doing it there as well? I was, I was at in by the sea today. They've got two chargers, one Tesla and one with, it looks like it's network and yeah, neither right. of them are in use and the parking lot is not full. Yeah, but I would also think that- you know, It's targeted at town, town land though. So, I, I mean, I, I sort of feel strongly that we should be worrying about things, property that's owned by the town first. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, so it seems I like- about, we're, we're, if it, But if it's sort of usage driven to get this, you know, you know, in by the sea is frankly, attracting a clientele that's gonna be more likely to own an electric car than other people and we get those people in town spending money. Two chargers doesn't feel enough to me for them by the sea at peak time. Um, and why wouldn't we do, you know, let's do four in by the sea and put eight in. I don't, I don't think we can do in by the sea. I think we have to do things on town land. Yeah. So our options are town, town owned properties. So Fort Williams oh. is one. And then there's a whole bunch of options in the town center. And I think there's probably one, either the schools or the, I think the library is a good idea. Something mm. that might give, like provide future flexibility for town vehicles to be charged at. I don't know, Perry, you would probably know. 
Um, yeah, but, I think we want to have a space for the future town vehicles that near the police station, community services, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I think if you put it in town center also, you actually have a fair, decent size of walkable to both residents, visitors, and businesses um, that gives you that use, use, usability. Um, my only, my cons I, I think Fort Williams get, will get a lot of use. My only concern there is it's actually not open after sunset and, mm -hmm. and it's, and it still is significantly seasonal. So, but I, I'm in favor of, 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 so many of people who going forward as much as we think we can justify. <laughs> I, I think it really helps your profile and helps the, uh, the town and residents and visitors shift to electric. A lot. Uh, Richard, one, of want, one of the ways I wanted to get some uh, some some cost information is because we got to get the town to buy in. Yeah. If, what? What's yeah? If you know, if if it if it, if our total cost is more than sixteen thousand, it can be more than sixteen thousand, and efficiency main will pay up to sixteen thousand, but they'll just pay eighty percent or whatever the maximum is. So, what I found is that it. I just took 16,000 as a, based on the information I currently have, a reasonable estimate of what the maximum is gonna be. All right, so, and if it turns out to be more than that, efficiency main would be more than that, but then the town cost will be more than that as well. And if I look at it, and I just, I just didn't know what the, what the, um, some of these numbers, uh, the, the, the recovery costs are, but if I look at what the what the cost to the town are is going to be uh, thirty two hundred dollars per four plug station plus sixty four dollars monthly software ch charges. That's in the thirty two thousand is just twenty percent of the sixteen thousand dollars. <throat> so all this is all this stuff is based on one one site with four plugs. If you want to go six plugs. <clears throat> Multiply these numbers by 1.5. Right? If you want to go eight plugs, multiply by two. But if I look at the charge, if the <clears throat> if the charge, I assume that with a network station, the charge the, the town is going to charge a tariff <clears throat> above and beyond what we're paying for electricity. I don't know what that is, what, what what the normal number is. But I just took a number of five cents per kilowatt hour just for chuckles. Okay, and if each plug is used 25% of the time when the park is open. So I took four plugs times 10 hours a day, which is basically what, how, much, how many hours the park is averagely open, <clears throat> times 30 days per month times 5 cents per kilowatt hour, and I assume 25% usage, then that means <clears throat> the income is only $15 a month. I think, I think I figured out what you missed, Richard. What's that? I think we need to multiply by the kilowatts. Like how many kilowatts does the charger draw? Okay, right. Okay. Right. So it, it but I don't I don't know how many that is, but it'll be more well, than if it's, yeah. if it's if it's if it's a I didn't miss that number, you're right. Um there's a basic <clears throat> I can look at that because there's a each charge has got to plug charge um Seven point seven point two kilowatts times seven. Continuous. Three times seven. Yeah. Okay. So a hundred bucks a month. So at five cents a kilowatt, it'd be a little bit over our cost yeah. on a running basis, but the town would still have to pay, you know, the initial capital costs. So this isn't a great revenue generator. <laughs> It's not a great revenue generator. No, but I think, but I think the point is, if we can, if the town on the screen image, if we can do this, and they basically say, it's going to, you know, you're going to contribute a couple thousand to put one of these things in, and it's not going to cost you anything to run it. Why wouldn't you do it? So maybe I put a one here, just for chuckles. <clears throat> So the initial cost is, you know, like thirty-two hundred dollars to the town, and then maybe we can get enough to cover our operating costs. 
But then the first, yeah. the first question we have, I think, is the town is the town willing to cough up the initial, the initial, roughly three to five thousand dollars, probably. Would this be just a simple act of charity on the town's part to do this, or, you know, is there any way that that we can pencil this this out in terms of some sort of future gen you know, revenue? That's meaningful. Well, that I make. think that's where the I think the Fort Williams site is most compelling from efficiency mains criteria. Mm -hmm. but the that's town right. center site is most compelling from the town's perspective because it seems likely there's going to be a town electric vehicle at some point in the not too distant future, just the way technology is moving. And if we have this charger, then that would be useful. I mean, I know the town's scooping on the budget, but if they can't cough up, if they can't cough up 3,500 bucks <laughs> for a charger in Fort Williams, we, we should just all quit. Let's be honest about this. <laughs> I was gonna say, we, couldn't some of the parking revenue budget, go towards what's this? The town, what's the town budget per year, 28 million? <laughs> like yeah. that. I, honestly, if you if you wanted to do it, you could sell the names for the charging stations and make the town money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we yeah. can find a. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. Could you find a that's local? Good. Yeah, we could get a sponsor for the charging station. Find a local business to sponsor it. Do we have to talk to the Fort Williams Park Committee yeah, before that's we propose this? That's <clears throat> yeah, one of the things sure. we should do. Yeah. Maybe they'll, they, they're making all kinds of money. Maybe they could pay for it. Well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, get more cars in that parking lot, paying parking fees. Hey, someone contribute $5,000, put their their name on the charging station, and pay $100 a year maintenance, maintenance on it. Yeah. Boom. Adopted by Competitive Energy Services, whomever. Yeah. But anyways, before we go through the application process, we need to get town buy-in on this, I think, you know. So, Richard, when is this due again? This is due relatively quickly, isn't it? It's due. December 1, I think, right? December 1. But with the pace of our meetings and things, yeah. it, it'll come very quickly. Yeah. I think the first thing that has to happen, I think, is that somebody needs to go to the town powers that be and say, you know, are you gonna, are we willing to cover this cost some way? Either by selling the name of the station or? So the, I guess the, the, the question is if we, sub, if we submit, we can always basically say, you know, we, we, we can't get there right now and, and withdraw, I assume. I just, I feel like if we won this and we didn't, the town didn't, I'm with Tom, if we won the, the RFP and the town didn't cough up the $3,000, it would be pretty sad. I agree with you, but, but it's, a, it's important that they're actually not committing right now, just yes. saying, go yes. ahead, if you win it, then we can re revisit the commitment. Um, <clears throat> just, we have to install it 12 months within 12 months from the bid. Okay. I think it, it seems to me that it's a no brainer to go back and I would probably ask for eight charging and say it's 6,500 and just do, let's get something short and sweet for the town say there's this opportunity we can put charging stations at Fort Williams, it's good for the town image. There's this rebate program, you know, efficiency main covers it. We do eight of these things, you know, worst end, you, you put some cushion in it, you're gonna be out of pocket, you know, dollars and we can try and find someone else to name it let us just put the application in i, I would like you know it's a to, to me it's just a no-brainer and i think all we need is like two or three pages for these guys tops there's an application and the application well i mean no to the town council or whoever we need or to matt sturgis or something we don't need a lot then we just then we just felt you know we just say we'll help you do the application you know, we'll do everything. You can hand them a. I would, I would love to vote to enable a subcommittee to just take this and talk to Matt and run with it and see what, see how far we can get, go. Yeah. yeah, Perry, do you know who like the um kind of what the next logical steps in terms of you know the the town 
you know, protocols would be. I mean, Maureen, I think maybe she was involved in this when this first came up last year. She, yeah, I don't know. Who should we go to immediately? Uh, uh, your first stop is town manager. Without okay. And, and he'll, he'll direct you in the direction. Um, Maureen will play a part in it. Um, she'll want a site plan done wherever the location will be. Um, I, I, uh, to go back to what you guys were talking about, I don't, I don't see a problem with the price. Um, it, def it definitely will kind of put us, it, it'll, it'll get you an answer to, is the town interested in going green or making revenue? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that will definitely answer the question. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing then is what you know, what you want to tell the town when you want to do it is you want to have it on whatever people, whatever people Google about Fort Williams Park or they're planning the trip. You know, you want them to say something on the town website, whatever. And it's like, hey, we got chargers here. Come up, park your car, walk around for a while. It's, it's yeah. funny, as a, as a person who uses the Fort Williams Park quite a bit, I want the people there to be charging their electric cars. I don't necessarily want more people to come. <laughs> but that may not be everyone's perspective. <laughs> That's my perspective. I agree. Wait a minute. I thought I thought Fort Williams was Cape Elizabeth's gift to the people of Southern Maine. But... <laughs> I, oh, it's a, it's a wonderful place, and I, I'm very happy many people enjoy it, but I also enjoy it when they don't come. <laughs> I, I think what John was getting at, and, and I kind of <laughs> like the idea, is I, I believe we can go ahead with the application and worry about the details with the town after the fact. Because you can always just go back to, you know, uh, Eco Maine and say, you know, if, if it falls through that, I'm sorry, we can't do it at this time. Well, we should maybe at least inform the town manager yeah. that we're sending in the application so yeah. that Efficiency Maine doesn't call him and he's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, think I don't think Efficiency Maine would be very uh, appreciative if we got the award and backed out. There's yeah, a limited I, number of chargers that they're, they're being awarded and they're going through a selection process and you know, I don't think that they would. Yeah, I think we should make sure that there's buy-in from the town before we... Yeah, I, I feel pretty confident that there's buy-in. Yeah. It's just meeting that timeline of getting it in by December. Right. I think you get a, a general sense of what the level of buy-in is. As long as you're you know, getting a hard withdrawal before they've actually made the awards, I think you're, in fi you're, you're not going to cause efficiency main any problems. Mm -hmm. They're just going to go. We 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 ranked them from one to one to eight, and okay, number three stepped out, so we now got them from one to one to seven. Yeah. And my guess is, my guess is Fort Williams has got to be a prime site for efficiency, man. You're going to want that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the bitter bitter on the brochure, man. Just listening to efficiency, main talk during the bidders conference. I mean, there, even though this likely usage has got a, is a is a is only a quarter of the of the uh, uh, decision fact, decision criteria. They really stress that a lot in the, um, in the conference. They want to make sure that, that their investment is being used to charge electric, electric vehicles. Yeah. And so uh, the more we can tout how much it's going to be used, the better chance of being approved. Well, I think, you know, it, you know, it, it, it it's a couple things when you think about this. I don't know if we can get any data on how many electric cars are floating around, but it's like, this is one of the issues with financing charging stations anywhere right now is there aren't enough electric cars. So I don't care, you know, you know, you put this thing in downtown Portland in one of the parking garages and you're probably going to be lucky to get a 25%, you know, charging rate because there just aren't that many electric cars floating around. So, you know, I don't know how we make the case, but you kind of say, you know, we've got one of the most visited, it's the most visited lighthouse in the world. Well, We're just going to have a lot more traffic there. People are going to need to charge cars. I, think I don't know how anyone makes the case for more electric charging when there aren't that, when the electric vehicle penetration is so low. Well, we, I, get, I think part of the case we could make is maybe like if, if there is, I actually tried to find a Fort Williams website and I found friends with Fort Williams Park, but 
if we could say having charging stations in a tourist attraction makes it more, it makes it easier for, um, you know, tourists to drive their electric car here. That's, yeah. that's something. Um, yeah. It's also about the future. I mean, there's going to be a lot more electric cars coming down the line. It's not necessarily a static thing. So yeah. I think, I think, I think back to what Tom was saying. Amazing. My question would be how many electric cars are out there that aren't Teslas? Yeah. I see Teslas all over the place. Yeah. But they're going to be more. But I think but I think my point was a little bit more the reverse is, you know, if you know, efficiency main is going to say, you know, the usage rate is really important to us. Well, tell me how you're gonna like assess anyone else's usage rate. You know, what's the criteria for getting that? And you're kind of saying, if you got chargers in one of the most visited places in Maine, it's going to get used. And, you know, anyone else is kind of, you know, smoking dope about doing this. You so know? To, an, to an extent, though, if you just look at their evaluation criteria for a second and think forward, how, what what's going to end up rolling into Efficiency Maine's re, um, report up to its board and, and funders and everybody else in a year or so, the thing that they're going to be able to measure the easiest is how much did we charge? And, and there, there's a few marquee strategic sites they're going to be able to brag about. They're not going to be able to brag much about cost or readiness or capacity uh, very much at all. So that's part of why I think they're stressing this is you look at what they're going to be able to report on and it's going to be, what do we charge? What is our infrastructure doing? Yeah, there's, a, there's a requirement in the RFQ too that, that we have to give reports to Efficiency Maine on just that, just those types of numbers. So, um, so, so they'll they'll make that assessment. And I think you know just by looking at the volume of traffic in in Fort Williams, which I think is that those numbers are available. Yeah. And the length of the visit, you know, it's it's much longer than going to the IGA and popping in for some groceries. I mean, you know, people are there for two or three hours. And looking at some of the sites around town. Some of them say, you know, you can't you can't park here any more than two hours. So I don't know. You know, we'll have to look at what the what the regulations we want to put on there as well. I mean, do we want to let somebody sit there for four hours or all day, or do we have to put some limitations on that as well? But all that can be incorporated in software as well, and shut them off after a certain period of time. So I, I, I think you you got the analysis slightly backwards though. Is is if you need to charge a car, you're saying where do I want to park for two or three hours? Because I know I'm going to have to. And that answer is, you know, Fort Williams is a great answer. The center of town where there's different things to do is a great answer. Um, things that are less central are a less good answer. Yeah, I would tend to think that the center of town is not much of a good answer for, you know, someone visiting because there's, let's be honest, there isn't that much to do in the center of town. Yeah, you know, and you particularly, you know, in the tourist. <laughs> Comparatively. You know, the center of Portland, yes, but. <laughs> I'd so. For, each, for the application, if we have different sites, we have to have a separate application for each site. Mm -hmm. So what we need to agree on, uh, you know, if, assuming that Sam is going to go to the town manager and get his buy-in, uh, if we'd agreed on, on Fort Williams for one of the sites, we have to decide <clears throat> how many plugs we want to put in Fort Williams. We have to put in at least four, but we can put uh, four, six, or eight. Um, if we put less than, um, then we have to decide on what other site we want to use. And if we want that site to be networked or not, because if it's not a network site, the costs are a lot less. That's what means that we pay it ourselves, right? There, there's That's no right. way to recoup the, right. the we, can't, we can't charge for the, for the power if it's not That's networked. Right. Right. It's like that would if be... you're going to have a not network site, the town center makes sense because we're imagining school teachers or town vehicles or residents. And so mm -hmm. we might not feel as, like the tourists, I think we want to charge for their mm -hmm. usage, but you could argue that the town could pay for town resident charging. Right, and it could incentivize people to stay and go sh and shop, you know, and get their, get their oh. teeth. Clean. Yeah, it was free, free power. Because there would be people in the town, you know, like if you're going to your kid's sporting event or something, you could, charge your car for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
or the library. Um, I mean, of course, right now we don't get to go to any of these places. <laughs> That's a challenge. Right now we drive up to the library and they put our books on the table and we drive away. <laughs> Someday we'll be back. So, um, here, so is there a spot in the town, like if we were to pick a site in in the town center, like town owned land area, what what like could you name a spot a spot that we should pick or I I would say going with the schools would be best. You know, what about the community services building, which is right next to the school? That that would be yeah, that would be fine. Especially if there's going to be school construction and stuff, you don't know where. Oh, good point. That's yeah. going to happen eventually. Yeah, yeah and, uh, the, that that can be serviced uh, the back parking lot or the front parking lot at, at community services. Mm -hmm. Community services lot is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the Assault IGA. You know. The, yeah, that's, and people that's are strong. spending time there too at the yeah, community services. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's you know if we do the school or the community service building, which basically we're talking about employees, um, you know you can put in a a non network charger that has an a um, RFID card. So people would then, you, you could limit it so just somebody couldn't, a non-employee couldn't just charge there. Uh, it would be like, you know, an, a, a school teacher who's got, a, got an electric vehicle could say, all right, I need an RFID card. And then they would use that to, when they mm -hmm. turn the thing on, when they plug it in. But so, does, does um, Efficiency Maine want us to limit it like that? Or do they want these more accessible? Well, I mean, I think if it's if it's um, if it's an employee parking lot, then I think I don't think there's any restrictions on that because they assume that it's going to be used by employees. And you know, they've said that you know, what's the employee number here? Uh, employees are qualified workplace is 50 employees working more than five days a week. Mm. Okay, but if it's, if it's community services, that's open to the public as well, res town residents anyway. Well, you know, we could, you know, we can leave it open for anybody then. You know, just that, just we're paying for the electricity. That's all. But we ought to decide, you know, whether we want the other site. <clears throat> how many charges at Fort Williams? The other site. How many charges? <clears throat> and is it going to be a network or not? Yeah. That's what you need to decide in order to assemble the information for the applications. Yeah, my gut tells me four, four to eight at Fort Williams and maybe four at community services. Um, at community services, you know, being, being not networked. Um, but then again, that would mean that we'd pay for the power. Um, do we have any sort of estimate? Maybe Richard, you ran this, you know, how much power we would be, you know, giving away through these, you know, non-network stations. Um, if it had like a, 25 50 percent you know occupancy rate um that'd be good to know so we could you know have that number when they ask oh how much is this going to cost us we would know that i could call some number how much are we pay for electricity perry 14 cents no oh, i think it's seven cents six or seven uh, cents yeah that's that's too low because you have to pay does that just the um that's our charge yeah, that's our that's our contracted rate. Um, so the the T and D rate would right. That. So that's not, add, that's not added in. Yeah. So adding that in, I don't go with your. What do you say? Twelve cents. Fourteen cents. I said. Yeah, let's go with that. Do you know? Yeah. Does Does anybody know? Are these capable of receiving Wi Fi, or does it have to be a wired data line for them? No, they can be Wi Fi. I think. Are you sure? Because we've got. Anywhere around the school right now, they put Wi-Fi extenders in for for outdoor classrooms. So um, getting Wi-Fi to anything around the schools is not a problem at all. And I, I was also going to recommend that uh, we have a fairly large electrical panel off the soccer field um, at right right off the middle school parking lot um, where we could get power from as well for anybody coming to a sporting event mm. or, or a teacher.
Richard, Richard, how um, onerous do these applications seem to be? And how much time should we give ourselves no, uh, well, for not, the actual production process? They're not too onerous. You know, the <clears throat> you just have to get quotes from vendors. Um, the, uh -huh. the application isn't that that big of a deal, really. Um, so it's town buy-in, get quotes from the vendors, and just get it in on time, basically. Yep. So those yeah. are the yeah, and in the town buy-in, uh, you get again if it just if it's just a general commitment to pursue this, um, without an actual you know cash you know cash payment, then that you know that's pretty, you know it should be a pretty easy easy lift. Um, do but we have to get, do we have to get like do we have to have a specific location at Fort Williams or a specific location in the town center? Yes, you do. Okay. You have to. You have to. Um, what you need in the quotes is um, <clears throat> yeah. Each must include two wow. quotes, one quote for electrical service. Uh, we have to indicate which vendor we'll use. We can change that afterwards if we like. A site photograph. So, um, so we'd have to decide. So we'd have to have a little coordination with like the Fort Williams Park Committee to make sure they would agree to our site and the and the town manager that they think the community services parking lot is a good location. Right. This is the application. Huh. So it's basically just a description. Um, then vendors for each site, then just basically information that basically supports their criteria. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is you know pretty straightforward. It's not a big deal. I can send this around for people to look at if they like. <clears throat> Only it's five pages, but it's it's pretty. Not really um, so yeah, I'll, I'll add this to my agenda when I talk to to Matt tomorrow. Um, but I think it could be like thirty five hundred dollars per four plug per set of four plugs. Is that right? I would say that um, you can do it one and two. Say. Yeah. I would say three to four thousand dollars for a poor four plug station. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta go six plugs, multiply that by one point five. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then whatever the what are the ongoing what are the ongoing costs for a network? You said thirty bucks a month though? It's, it's thirty it's it was thirty two bucks per <clears throat> two plug station or for each site that's got software associated with it. It's 32 bucks for this. Okay. Thing. This is awesome research, Richard. We're really, yeah, this is, this is cool. I think, you know, uh, you know, again, it depends on, depends on what the town's appetite to put any dollars towards something that, you know, doesn't have an immediate payback. Yeah, of course, this is in, in the town thing, you'll see the value in this. Certainly, um, it makes a ton of sense if the town is ever going to have a, uh, you know, electric vehicles um, to have one, you know, where the, the, you, can, you can charge them up. Yeah, and as for Fort Williams, I mean, again, they'll get, they'll get used, you know, and again, it's, you know, is the investment on the town's part, um, you know, into this, these, you know, uh, chargers in Fort Williams is that, you know, um, is, do they see the value kind of in, in, in just kind of in doing that as, as far as, as, you know, kind of the, you know, PR or kind of, you know, green ability, you know, value. Um, but again, we could auction. I love the idea of auctioning off, you know, the, the, the names of those stations, you know, sponsored by, I think that's a great idea. Um, that could really generate a lot of, you know, a lot of interesting kind of, you know, buzz, I think in town too. So. Uh, it looks like the Fort Williams Park Committee also meets on the third Thursday. Of the month. So they are potentially meeting as we speak. <laughs> okay. And they have some kind of Fort Williams Park master planning process going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but we probably need to talk to them about the location. 
Yeah. Before we submit an application. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's an email address to email them. Do you want me to email them? Or Richard could, um, he's got the information, but. Is there a, who's, who's in charge of that? I'd just I'd like to call them, I think. It says, there's a staff contact, Kathy Raftis, Director of Community Services in Fort Williams Park. And then the people on the committee are Kenneth Pierce, Lauren Springer, Suzanne McGinn, Doreen Johnson, Terriot, James Walsh, Jim Kearney, and Mark Russell. I can say the chair there. It doesn't say who the chair is. Um, you could start. You could start with Kathy. She's just she's a li liaison, just a, just as what I'm doing. So that would be your point of contact, and then she could share that with the committee. Doesn't tell us. You have her number, Perry? Uh, I don't have it on me, but I can get it for you. Yeah, here's her email address. I can email that to you, Richard, if you want. All right. All right. Um, yeah, we don't want to upset the parks people. They'll be the hell to pay, I think, if we go around them. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't, you know. <laughs> also, I think we have to try and touch them to see if they're going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the um, uh, the money from, I mean, of course, I'm sure it's earmarked already, but of course, the um, the the parking, you know, the payment kiosks, so I think are generating a nice, a, a nice you know, nickel for the town. Um, so that could sub, you know, subsidize some of this. Um, but yeah, I think it's all, I think it's great pursuing. Um, again, yeah, great, great research, Richard. Um, glad, glad to have your analytical, you know, kind of, you know, mind on, you know, working on this. Um, so yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see where this goes. Trying to find these numbers at some point. I mean, these numbers, I just, you know, just yeah. guesstimating, I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, if there's any more analysis that you think we need to do before you, you, you run it by Matt, um, let me know. Well, I think, are you going to run it by Matt? I, 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 I was going to talk to him anyway about the solar thing, but do you want to be a part of that? We, you know, we can, we can talk with them about it together. Sure, okay. You, you clearly got a lot, lot of ideas. Yeah. Let me know when. Okay, perfect. I will do that. All right, I, I'll put, since we haven't decided whether we want network non-networked or what the specific site is, I'll, I'll let you people ruminate on it and I'll send an email out in a couple of days to see what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. I should have, I should also be able to get um, uh, some cost information on a non-network. I've got some cost, but it's a little bit fragmented. Uh, the juice bar was the yeah, I know. most on top of things. They were good people to do. Yeah, that. South Portland. South Portland has a uh, non-networked ones, um, and they may give you maybe give you an idea of who they used. I took pictures of those, and South Portland is using all of the ones I saw at South Portland were. Here. Sam Milton on Fort Williams. You might um, ping Jeremy Gabrielson because um, he's the the town council liaison to the Fort Williams committee, just to give him get his uh, quick viewpoint because he's. Yeah. He was at the climate thing mm -hmm. as well as is the that might be also a, a worthwhile uh, data point. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, yeah. Jeremy Gabrielson. Who's he? He's on the town council. Yeah, he's the, he's the liaison to the Fort Williams Park Committee from the town council. I was just reading their minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine they will give us a hard time. They've already despoiled the park by putting those pay kiosks in. So, what's what what's what's more infrastructure? South Portland has got a. Uh, the four I've seen in South Portland have all been non-networked, and they're all by Clipper Creek. The networked one in uh, at in by the sea is by General Electric.
Okay. Okay, anything else? Thank you, Richard. That's fantastic. Great. Really excited. Um, great. Hey, um, what else? I know, uh, oh, one thing I think was tabled last last time, um, maybe again, but um, I know John and Carrie were, were kind of tooling with the idea of creating like a policy or some sort of way to like, you know, to engage more consistently kind of with, with town and kind of make sure we sync up with their values or, um, well, I'll let you explain it, but John, Carrie, are there any, any, any updates we on We haven't on done that? anything unless John no, has. <laughs> not, not entirely. Honestly, I, 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 some of that was supplanted by the in, um, interaction with the climate action plan from Portland, South Portland, which I think is heading in exactly the same direction, which is basically putting your vision into actionable things you're going to measure and, and, and act on. And so mm -hmm. they seem kind of related to me. So I was hoping actually to catch up with Carrie afterwards to talk about that and talk about how they might fit together. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. It's been sort of I've had a couple of personal things in the last week or so. So yeah. no, that's, that's on good. deck. Love to have that conversation soon, Carrie. Yeah, no, that sounds good. That makes sense to me. Um, and Barbara, I know you wanted to be involved too, possibly. So I think so. Yeah, if it works out. If not, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Um, any other things? Um, well, again. one thing we talked about, which I think I was supposed to do something on, and I, I also didn't, um, was the energy efficiency improvements in the non-school buildings we talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah, and I was supposed to do something, and I failed miserably as well. <laughs> yeah, so I think Tom and I were supposed to coordinate and talk to some um, potential uh, Companies about audits. How to do that before the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, right. You know, and this all um, ties into some research that I had, I did. I reached out to um, Great Portland Council of Governments to see if they had any sort of resources for, for us. Um, now it's all coming back to me. So I, I called them, spoke with uh, Sarah Knapp Mills. Um, she was actually on our climate um, kind of action call uh, a few weeks ago, um, and she said there's there there aren't really any resources for towns um, to do energy audits of of, of town buildings. Um, so that was you know kind of the end of that conversation. But then you know it segued into how they would be really open to helping us with the thinking about climate action planning strategies and that sort of thing. Um, so at least related to this, to this, you know, point is that, you know, they, they don't have any resources at their disposal that they're aware of, um, for energy audits. Um, and efficiency main doesn't either, I don't believe for like kind of one-off stuff. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's, that's where we are, you know, on the energy audit side, but yes, yeah, I will still be very interested to hear. Um, what some of the, yeah, what some of the comp companies out there, um, you know, will do and, you know, for how much. Um, so let us know. And I won't, I won't be so nice next time if you fail to come up with any, with a, uh, a report. <laughs> um, so anyway. Um, Gary, uh, one thing to back up with, um, one of the things that uh, we're going to need eventually is, um, uh, a estimate on our quote from for, for the uh, connecting the power. You probably got some uh, vendors that you use in the town. Uh, yep. That mm. uh, uh, so just uh, just a heads up. At some point in time, we'll need a quote from them for the two sites that we're interested in. So okay. I don't know if there's any groundwork you need to lay or uh, heads up you need to give these guys. Yeah, I mean. It, um... That, that that won't be hard for me to do. I'm pretty much meet weekly with them <laughs> on projects around the town. Um, it, it'll you will get a more accurate proposal from them if we actually pin it down to a certain location. Um, but I can get something vague too, you know, maybe within a thousand bucks or whatever. I, it depends on the location. It, you're muted, Richard. Within the next, before our next meeting, <clears throat> I think this group needs to decide on um, 
you know, the, the, other, the other location and how many plugs at each site, okay? So I wouldn't, um, and then that would, <clears throat> that, um, once we have that information, then we can go, we can get, uh, you can get quotes on those guys. So since our next meeting is not until, you know, just before Thanksgiving, I think we'll have to make that decision and get the quotes from these people before that, before that meeting. Can we um, make, I mean, we want to do Fort Williams. Why don't we work with the Fort Williams committee? Um, the Fort Williams committee to pick the site for that. And then for, if we want to do community services, Perry could probably tell us where the best location there would be. It should be, you know, where cars park and then close to where we can get electricity pretty easily. Yeah, the uh, community center is actually, actually I had it pulled up. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I was thinking about this back parking lot in this area behind the building. Or, or if they're open to it, we can do the front. It's, it's really the, the decision of town manager or community center. Uh, yeah. where, where does the faculty park? The faculty is over in this lot. What it, what it is is the seniors are in this area, juniors are in this area, and faculty is over here. I don't, yeah, I don't have anything over in this area where, well, no, I lie. There is an electrical outlet and a, I believe a couple outlets and a panel on the back of this field. I'd, I'd have to have an electrician look at that to see if there's enough power there. Are there lights for the tennis courts or the football field there? Yes. Uh, tennis courts I don't think are lit. We have lights in the parking lot. We have lights at the football field. Yeah, that's not well used, I wouldn't think. I would think the back of the community service would be a good, a good spot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a faculty will park there. If, if a faculty person has a electric car, they'll, they'll park there. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think, I think behind the building would be best only because it wouldn't obstruct then the uh, daycare traffic that comes in and out of the front of the building. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. And then this, this other location I was talking about was over here. This little spot right here next to the soccer field is a very large, it's basically the panel for all the electric throughout this whole area. We could easily run, run up this little embankment and put something here along the parking lot. We can also do more state, more charging stations next year. So we right. get started with one or two locations. But I would just think you, you want to put it where the faculty are going to use it. Yeah. Well, who parks in that parking lot? This is, this is faculty, especially right now yeah. due to COVID. <laughs> That's the grade school and middle school parking, I think, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, because they uh, the the elementary doesn't really have a parking lot, so they share this they share this area. Which part? Well, we, we have the whole issue of the fact that the schools are going to get torn up, so that's what makes the the um, community services parking lot so great. And I. Oh, okay. You know, just, just for conversation's sake, right now the talk is a new middle school would get built in this area, hmm. and the elementary school kids. After that is built, the the middle school kids would move into that building. The elementary kids would temporarily move into the middle school. They would tear down the elementary, build a new elementary school, and then. We're, we're in business. That this building here would remain. That uh, the 30s building is the actual original high school. <laughs> but all subject to change. You know, and it, I mean, the other area too is back down here at the fitness center as well. Hmm. Wait, what do they call a site? I mean, could this, could the whole school complex be considered one site? No, they said, they talked about that and they said um, one site can be one parking lot. Okay. You can have, you can put different plugs in different parts of the parking lot. 
<clears throat> but they were they um, they restricted the the size of the site to one parking area. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the back, back of community services makes a lot of sense. It's also accessible to the, you know, uh, the shopping center. It's accessible to just both Pond Cove and the high school. Networked or not? I'm indifferent. And doesn't, if it, if they're networked though, doesn't that, I, I thought there was something people could do that they could actually see it on a map and reserve it? That's yeah. Right. Yes. So that if, somebody, if somebody was visiting the town, they would be able to see that it's back there behind the community center. I think if, if the networked site is a, not that much more than the non, or the non network site isn't that much cheaper than maybe just do networked for both, but depends on the price difference. Yeah, I think if it's, I think if it's networked, you have the choice to charge for it um, or you can offer it for free. Um, so there's there's that that option I think and maybe it's a little bit it's a little smarter too. Um, we like, we would be able to know how much power it's actually drawing I think. Um, where if it's not networked, it's just basically it's like a it's like a plug in the wall, you know, and it's not smart at all and we can't charge for it. It's not metered. To, so I think, net, extent, I think network is basically a form of metering. Yeah, to an extent, non-networked is going to be cheaper upfront costs. Long run, your networks are actually going to be able to pay for their operating costs. And the non-network won't. If you if you charge for them, right? yeah. Um, but there's also a thirty dollars a month charge, right? You know, to maintain those network sites, okay. which may or may not be worth it, depending okay. on what the for value the one, is received. For the one vendor that I've got comp comprehensive information on, <clears throat> the non-network unit is only five hundred for a two plug unit. For a two plug unit, it's only $500 less. Not hmm. capital cost. Interesting. That's, that's just for one vendor. I would, you know, those, those, those um, pretty, the simple, you know, plugs they've got at South Portland, those can't cost that much, I wouldn't think. Um, so I'd be curious to see what you find if you talk to this guy. It probably cost. Fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand. Oh, for a two pack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we would get, we'd have to pay eighty percent. No, we get would pay twenty percent of that. So we could be in for a couple hundred bucks there. Like I say, the information that I've got to date seems to indicate that you know the 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 uh, the award values that Efficiency Maine has come up with is pretty you know, pretty reasonable from the standpoint of what they're estimating the maximum is going to be mm -hmm. in, right in the right in the ballpark. I think the most expensive ones, probably 80% would be $16,000, depending on, you know, what the installation costs are, the, you know, how long, how long we have to run the, uh, the electrical lines, etc. So if we've got two sites where, where the electricity is pretty available, and that cost is going to be fairly minimal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thousand to fifteen hundred bucks probably. So the rest of the cost is is probably but, just mechanical. I think some of the calls between whether it's networked or non-networked or like I, I think we just, your best guess is probably as is as good as any. So you know, talk to the talk. You know, if, if Perry says behind the community services and see what Fort Williams says, and then just you know, go forward. I mean. Well, the next the action items here are for um, Richard and me and whoever else. Uh, you know, give Matt kind of an update. You know, let him know kind of what we've discovered here. Um, let him know that it's time sensitive, <laughs> um, and basically. Yeah, you, know, you know, tell them that we're, we're interested in moving forward, you know, and we have the town's, you know, basically permission to submit this application. Yep. Um, and in the meantime, you know, check in with the, with the um, Fort Williams people to see if Fort Williams Park could be a viable location. And if so, uh, yeah, where could uh, it be? 
Yeah, I, I do think it's important how we frame it too, because I think you know getting the awards for the efficiency main is, is a that's a nice feather in our cap. You're you're getting a significant asset for a, a very low cost. So it's not just it, it's it's not only what the town's putting into it; it's what they're getting out of it. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what it's going to cost them if they don't proceed her, uh, what's, what this will cost if we don't get this agreement as well. Right. Well, I'll, when, I, when I make a um, uh, calendar you know, time with, uh, with Matt, I'll let everyone know and people can, can join in. Yep. Um, so if there's a, a specific point you want to make, um, then that would be a good time to do that. Uh, uh, I just want to remind <laughs> remind the framework for the conversation because we focus very much on what what is the commitment to the town and it's easy to forget. Well, you know, mm -hmm. part of this because the fish sea main is paying a big chunk that we're getting. Yeah. If we win, if we are awarded. Yeah. And I expect I expect that we'll we'll have a pretty good chance of winning if we if we submit a compelling proposal for uh, for Fort Williams and for the community services for that matter. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what the rejection rate is for these proposals, but probably pretty low. Um, I would think Fort Williams would be a no-brainer with the amount of traffic that's there. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's the picture they want on their brochure, Thomas. They're going to take it. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> yes. I, I you. think that that one, yeah, I, I think that that one is one they're going to choose. <laughs> yeah, actually, what you ought to tell them to do, yeah, what you ought to say is, you know, we'll put the charging stations right down in the traffic circle by the line. <laughs> parking, you can get your pictures. Uh, yeah, it's got to have a view of the lighthouse, wherever, wherever these stations are. Based on um, the discussions and their comments during the bidders, the bidders uh, review, um, you know, uh, Fort Wayne just seemed to just cry out for them. I mean, it just seems mm -hmm. all their criteria and all their discussions. So I think that's going to be it's going to be a no-brainer. It's the, it's the we town go center. for eight there then? What's that? Do we go for eight? Well, I, there, you know, there's a million visitors a year there. I don't know why you wouldn't do eight. I'm not sure whether we're limited to the total amount we can apply for because there's only, I think, a total of 60 awards. Oh. 60, 60 plugs? I think only 60 plugs. So, you know, you apply for eight, maybe they cut you back to four. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll have, have to talk about that. I mean, um, I, think the, I think the ones in the town center will add more like strategic value to town operations because yeah. I can see, like, you know, if there was a town vehicle, you it's close enough to where all the town things are that you could certainly park it there overnight for charging. Yeah, but, you know, it would, it would help if the town had an electric vehicle already. I know. <laughs> I know. Or a plan to get one. <laughs> well, Perry, I, I, I'm going to pin down Perry in the next couple of weeks <laughs> to get a schedule of, um, of turnover vehicles. Uh, you know, so we can, we can, we can identify at least the, you know, a, a couple of potential vehicles that we can, you know, uh, plan on and kind of, you know, turning over and turning into, into EVs. So um, I, 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 I feel like, you know, we can all come to, you know, give, you know be confident that within the next, maybe certainly in the next 24 months, there'll be, you know, a, a, a small handful of electric vehicles, you know, owned by the town. Interesting point, this whole, the money that's funding this is from the VW settlement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. For the town vehicles, we can get just get the real cheap ones that go on the building, the real cheap chargers too. Mm -hmm. We don't have to use up the public one, the potentially public chargers for all the town vehicles that we're going to get either. So. Yeah, and like the the the, the dumb chargers, they're uh, you know less than a thousand dollars. The town vehicles are the ones you charge overnight at Fort Williams because there's no visitors. Ah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I need to run off. So if you'll excuse me. Yeah. I do as well. Yep. All right. Great work. Thank you. Yes. Not, yeah. We need a motion. Carrie, I'll ping you this week. Okay. Yep. Great. Around. Not going anywhere. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Bye, everybody. I'm in Bye. favor of that. <laughs> so moved. Motion, okay. motion accepted. Meeting adjourned. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Have a good night. This is so much fun. All right. Bye, guys.